Well, that was good timing. <laughs> and as you heard our scripture coming from Romans chapter 10, verse, verses 9 through 13. And again, uh, my sermon topic came to me in the middle of the night. And it's one of those uh, interesting situations. And I always say God has a sense of humor. And I think it was something like 2.49 in the morning, I woke up and I sent Sister Joni a text. And I know she wondered, what is go, huh? <laughs> what did you say, Sister Joni? I said, I didn't want to, but I wouldn't wait. You wouldn't? <laughs> she said she wasn't awake <laughs> because she didn't respond until sometime around 8 or 9 in the morning and she sent me the thumbs up. <laughs> She said, I guess she's thinking, God can wake you up all he wants to. Let him disturb your sleep, not mine. Yeah, <laughs> Tell you to keep sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah. But anyway, my sermon topic is say his name, say his name. And when he gave me the topic, I was thinking about this worldly song. I don't know who wrote it, but I remember hearing the song, Say My Name, Say My Name. But when God woke me up, it was Say His Name, Say His Name. And then carried me to Romans 10, 9 through 13 with the emphasis on verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. And I want to look at this passage in the light of a relationship with Christ. Now, it is important to know where to go when you have a need. All right? Uh, it's important to know when do we call on the Lord? Now, when uh, I was the supervisor, the driver supervisor in the bus garage here in Jefferson County, uh, every once in a while, uh, the, one of the roads would be blocked by a train. And the buses would be sitting there because the train was blocking. And of course, no school bus can go around a, a crossing buck where the signals are blinking even when there is no train. That's state law. That's state law not just here. That's state law just about everywhere. But of course, me being a railroad buff, I know that on each one of those railroad signals, there is a number that you can call if there is a malfunctioning signal. And so I took it upon myself to go around to every grade crossing in Jefferson County where our schools cross, those that were controlled by a crossing gate or the blinking signals, or those that just have the signal, the, the crossing buck with no signals where a train could be sitting. 
And even the one that we cross in Berkeley County, where the bus would go to take students to James Rumsey and get the number on the buck, the crossing buck, of the railroad that owned that signal. And I made a list and put on everybody's desk at the bus garage so that if a driver called in and said where they were, any of us could call and find, depending on which railroad it was, give them the signal number to let them know that the signal was malfunctioning or that there was a train blocking our school buses. I took it upon myself to go around and get every one of those and make a list of them so that we could quickly get the signal either fixed or the train moved as quickly as possible so that the kids could get to school or we'd have to make arrangements to get the buses rerouted in some way. So there, were, there was a number that you could call. Now, that was placed on everybody's desk. There are important numbers that I'm sure everybody knows. If I mention, for example, 411, information. Now, when I was growing up in DC, I knew this number by heart, even as a small child. It was, and most of us now, we're used to all numbers, but it was WE61212. And I used to love to dial that number when I learned how to work the phone because there was this nice little sounding lady. She would tell you what the weather was, the WE standing for weather. And then there was another number that you could call, TI42525, time. And I would call that sometimes just for fun, just to hear this lady say, good morning. At the tone, the time will be 11.56 and 20 seconds. Beep! That happens to be the time right now. Then, of course, there was a number that you could say, so y'all know what time it is because I'm looking at the clock. <laughs> then there was another number that even now we use, but we use it with our cell phones. 611. That was if you had a problem and your phones weren't working properly and you had one line or one phone that was working, you could call 611 and get a repair. Now, if you got a cell phone and you dial 611 now, now maybe it might not work on your phone, but on my phone, if I dial 611, I'm going to get AT&T and I can talk to them about my bill. I can tell them if my phone's not working, if I want to make changes in my service. So 611 still works today. And, of course, then later on, so that you wouldn't have to dial seven digits to get the popo, I mean the police. <laughs> then they came out with 911. Now there was another number. Now I don't know whether this number worked in your house, but there was another number in my house that you called or you didn't call. And that number was, if you were getting a spanking, you called nine, don't run. <laughs> Every job has a list of numbers for the Office of Personnel, who to call for certain situations, help desk numbers, to report an absence, or request leave numbers, or et cetera. If you're in the school system, if you work in Jefferson County, there's something called the Smart Find Express. 
You can log on the internet and put in your, your, your access number and the lady will talk you through, the computer will talk you through what numbers to put in to report an absence or they will call you to set, tell you there is a job available and if you accept that substitute assignment, then you, it will tell you where to go and report to work. There are all sorts of numbers. There are numbers for technical support for this or for that. But most of them now, you don't get a live person. Everybody knows that. You call somebody for help. You might spend half the day getting to press this, press that, press one, press two, press this, press that. If you need further assistance, go back to one, press one, press two, press three, press four, press this, press that. I'm sorry, we can't connect, call back or leave your number. We'll call you back when we get time. Or we'll send your call to Timbuktu or hoop de doo and we'll get to you when we feel like it. And then when you get hoop de doo press one, press two, call this, call that, and then you get somebody, hello, where are you calling from? I do not understand you. Please try, I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. And then you call back to supposedly a local number and you get a press one, press two, you know the story. And by that time, you about ready to have an unsanctified fit. As Reverend Barry said at Miss King's funeral, you about ready to go into quote unquote tongues. But you know, long before there was any of this, in Christ, we also have someone to call. Before there was Wi-Fi, there was prayer. The scripture tells us that the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much. You always get a live person on the line. A long time ago, somebody penned the song, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. You see, because back in the day, before we had our own personal phone number, when we had hardwired phones, Somebody couldn't afford their own personal phone and they had party lines. But if you were fortunate to, enough to have your own personal phone, it was the main line. So say somebody pinned the song, he's on the main line. That means there was no chance of anybody eavesdropping on the line. Prayer was your main line. Nobody was picking up to listen in. And the scripture tells us when we pray, the spirit sends up groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, that's like having today on the computer a message being encrypted that nobody else can understand or hack or hijack because it's going straight into heaven. Now, sometimes the old folks used to send up a prayer when they couldn't put it into words. They would just moan and shake their heads and go, mm, Lord have mercy. And then I thought about what that verse says, whosoever shall call upon the name of of the Lord. Let me stop right there. Yeah, I didn't finish the verse. Because it said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Now, I know a lot of times all we think about is that has something to do with someone who is unsaved. And I've used that scripture so many times as part of the quote unquote Roman road to lead someone to salvation. But when the Lord gave me this message, it has to do 
more than just with leading somebody to Christ. It also has to do with calling upon the name of the Lord when you have some other stuff going on in your life. Think of the times when you called on the Lord and all you could say is, Lord, have mercy. Or call on the Lord and not know what to say, but all you could say is, oh, Jesus. I think of the song that we sing sometimes, Jesus, Jesus, how I love calling that name. Or the old hymn that says, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music to my ears. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. There's something about when you say that name, things are supposed to happen. It's just like nobody is supposed to dial 911 unless you really need some help. Amen. Unless you really need the police, the fire, or emergency services. Because if you call it and don't need it, you can get into some serious trouble. I believe that's why God says, thou shalt not call the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Amen. Don't call that Amen. name yes, and you don't mean it. Amen. When you call him, you best call him for a purpose. Amen. Now you can call him and say, Jesus, I just wanted to hear your voice. Yes, That's legitimate. Yes, because he loves to fellowship Amen. with the saints. Mm -hmm. yes, oh, you always get a live person. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make any difference what your social status is, how much you make, what side of the tracks you live on, where you were born, whether you were born near the outhouse or across the street from the White House. He says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter whether you are a public assistance recipient or whether you have millions sitting in the bank. How do I know this? The word says, this poor man cried unto the Lord, yes, and he heard me. Amen. Yes, 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 that verse says whosoever. Mm -hmm. Who is whosoever? The whosoever is whoever will decide I need to make a phone call. Amen. Whoever is the person who wakes up in the middle of the night and says something is troubling me. There's trouble in my way. I need to ring up heaven. I'm whosoever. Whosoever is the one that's cried all night long and says I need him who says God shall wipe away all tears. I need to make that call and call him by name. Whosoever is the one that's got joy flowing like a river. I've got to tell him about the joy that I'm feeling deep down in my soul. I said I wasn't going to tell anybody, but I just can't keep it to Amen. myself. Amen. I've got to tell him about the testimony, about when I look back over my life yes, and I think about the things over and over again that he's brought me through and I know I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. I've got to call him and Amen. tell him, you know you brought me 
through some stuff. I wouldn't be where I am if it had not been for you on my side. I want to remind him about my testimony. Oh, I know he knows it because he brought me through it, but I got, just got to tell him. I know he's heard it before. I know he won't mind me being redundant, but I got a testimony and I got to tell it. Oh, I'm whosoever. Oh, I got to tell him about my sickness. The one the doctor said he can't do nothing. I got to tell him about this surgery that's coming up and what the doctor wants to do. But I got to get another opinion because I've had this opinion and that opinion. I've called this number and that number. I've punched the ones, the twos, the threes, the fours. I've been put on hold. I've heard the music, the music, the music. Now I've got to hang up and I've got to call Oh Jesus. And I got to let him know I got to plead my case. Whosoever. Yes, sir. I'm part of the who. Yes, sir. And I am the soever. Yes, sir. Because these are times when folks are saying, so, yeah, mm -hmm. so, and I will ever call him. Yeah, so, ever, I'm going to call him yes, right now. And so, whosoever shall call, yeah, I'm calling, mm -hmm. shall be saved. Mm -hmm. So, 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 okay, all right. <laughs> what you gonna save me from? <laughs> what do you need me to save you from? Well, right now, I got some trouble. Trouble in my head right now. No, I'm not crazy. But I got some troubling things that worry me. I'm worried about the things I see on the news. I'm worried about the direction this country's going. I'm worried about the things people are calling right when they're wrong. I'm worried. Yes, sir. I need to call him. Yes, sir. I'm worried yes, sir. about who's leading us yes, and the direction they're leading. I'm worried. Amen. I need to call him because when I call him, I know he's gonna tell me he is still in control. Mm -hmm. And he says, I shall be saved. So I got to trust him on that. So he's going to save me from it. Don't know how, but I know he will. Because when I look back and I think about the stuff he saved us from. I look at the stuff he saved my ancestors from. When all the obstacles were against us. I look at the word of God and I see the stuff that he saved the Israelites from in spite of the obstacles. I see the miracles that he did. So I think of the stuff that he did way back then. Yes, sir. And the scripture tells me he's the same yesterday today yes, and forever. And the hymnologist wrote, it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. So if he's the same yesterday, today and forever, and he's God all by himself and needs nobody else, let me ring him up and call him. Oh, Jesus. We need you right now. In this 
day and time. Yes, sir. Lord, we need you. Mm -hmm. I need you to touch the sickness yes, in my body. Yes. I need you yes. to touch the situations that I face each and every day. Mm -hmm. I need you yes, when I get up in the morning yes, to order yes, my every yes, step. Yes, because Lord, yes. you know sometimes my balance mm -hmm. gets a little thrown off. Yes, yes. My equilibrium yes, gets a little strange. Mm -hmm. Now, I know some of the medicine I take, it says it may cause your balance mm -hmm. to be thrown off. Mm -hmm. And so I know, Lord, I need you. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, when I get up in the morning to order my every step yes, to keep me on balance, Lord. I need you to save me sometimes from myself. Save me sometimes from my thoughts. Save me sometimes from my evil thoughts. Save me sometimes from my old nature. Save me sometimes from that other nature that's at war with me because of the new nature that's in me and it wants to break out and fight. And Lord, you said greater is he that is in me Amen. than he that is in the war. Lord, I need to call you because sometimes that old nature rails up and I know I can't fight it by myself. Lord, get down in me. Fight the battle when I can't fight it by myself. Hey. Oh, Lord. Save me from myself. Save me from my anger. Save me from my hatred. Save me. Paul said, when I would do good, hey, evil is ever present. Save me from my tongue. Sometimes it wants to go in gear before I can engage my brain. Oh, Lord. Oh, I could go on and on and on about stuff that he needs to save me from. But, Lord, you know, I, I, I got to let that go because there's some stuff that you saved me to. Oh, the easiest one, you saved me to redemption. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whosoever. Yes, who? I'm who? Amen. Who? You saved me. So? Yes, I say so. You Amen. saved me. So? You saved me to the whoever will call on your name. I call you because whoever calls you will one day be with you forever. Mm -hmm. So you saved me to mm -hmm. the forever of heaven. Amen. So I got that. So you saved me to fire insurance. So that's a given. So now, Lord, save me to the joy of the Lord. You saved me to freedom in Christ. You saved me to fellowship with other believers. You saved me to friendship with other believers. You saved me to freedom from worry because your word says cast all my cares on you because you care for me. So when the care starts trying to come back in, uh -uh, I ain't going on that trip. Lord, you saved me to the freedom from care. I embrace that. You saved me to it. Lord, you saved me to liberty mm -hmm. in Christ. Amen. You saved me to the willingness and yearning yes, to share yes, with somebody. Yes, 
You saved me to the hunger mm -hmm. for more time with you. Do you have anybody you just can't talk to enough? Now think about it. Somebody that you just enjoy so much, you talk to them a couple of times a day. I bet you if you think about it, everybody in here got somebody you talk to a couple of times a day. Uh-huh. You know them, right? Or you think about them a couple of times a day. And it's not always somebody that causes you to go, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> but you got somebody you talk with. It might be a best friend, and you go, yo, hey, what's up? <laughs> or the ladies, y'all might have this girlfriend, hey, girl. Yeah, how you doing? You know, yeah, see, there you go. You got it. You got this. Uh huh. What you want? Oh, nothing. Let's just, just chat. Yeah. And guys, hey, you want to go hang out? Yeah. What you want to do? I don't know. And you might not say nothing. It's just hang out. You might just sit there in the television staring at both of you. Game on and you ain't watching. Uh-huh, see, you can identify. You got see, you know I'm right. TV on, y'all just sitting there in each other's company. Well, that's what God wants. Sometimes you just want to be in his presence and you don't have to say anything. Just be in his presence. The word says sometimes you don't have to say nothing. Just be still. Woo! And know that God is God. Sometimes just being in the presence of God is just enough. Amen. And sometimes just being in his presence and you can't think of nothing to say. And you know, have you ever been in love with somebody so much and you call them up and be on the phone and you're just on the phone? Hello. What you doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what you doing? Oh, nothing. You still on the line? Yeah. How you feeling? Good. I miss you. I miss you too. But you know what? That's the kind of relationship we ought to have with God. Get up in the morning. Hello? What's up? Hey, God. And God said, What you want? Oh, nothing. You still there, God? Yeah, I'm here. I love you, God. I love you, too. Child, why them tears falling? I'm just thinking about how good you are to me. And God says, I know. Child, what you gonna do today? I don't know, God. But I know this, I don't want you to leave me for a moment. I won't, child. I told you I would never leave you Man. nor forsake you. Man. All you got to do is just say my name. Call me. Call me in the morning. Call me late at night. Call me at noonday. I got time for you. 
I'm never busy. Because I never sleep nor do I slumber. I've always got time for you. If you've got nothing to say, just me hearing you breathe on the other end. God says that's enough. Because I count every breath just like I count every tear that you shed. And I numbered every hair on your head. And I'll number every syllable that you say. All you got to do, saints, is just say his name. Say his name. And sometimes, you know, as babies, when babies first learn how to call their parents, they practice just to see if it works. Mom, 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 dad, 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 dad. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> Songwriter says, we are our heavenly father's children. And all he wants us to do, he's taught us his name. Yes, sir. He wants us to practice calling his name. Amen. And so then when we need something, we don't have to be introduced to him Amen. because we know him. Amen. And his word says, my sheep know my voice and I know my sheep. Mm -hmm. And that way, when we call him, oh, that's so and so. I know that voice. Mm -hmm. Or when we moan, I know that voice. Mm -hmm. I know that distress call before you even get it out. Oh, that child is hurting. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That child's in need. That moan means I'm hungry. I'll figure it out. I know that moan. Mm -hmm. I know that grunt that's a pain from deep down within. That's how God knows us. He says, call me and I will save you. Saving is more than just salvation. It's complete and total rescue from whatever ails you. When it says, whosoever shall call upon the Lord shall be saved. And it also says later on in that passage in verse 11, for the scripture says, anyone who believes on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. Because if you know him and you know what he can and will do for, him, for you, mm -hmm. it's something to brag about. That's something to tell somebody else about. And nothing ever to be ashamed about. Because you've got somebody that loves you and cares for you. And you can run to in the time of trouble. Just say his name. Say his name. Say his name. Yes, sir. Is there one?